Hi, Hi Kitty Wink, Wink listeners. listeners. I'm Juliana. And I'm Lindsay. Glad you're all here for story time. Yes. Okay, open-hearted, playful, and intelligent listeners. This is episode number 19. Whoa. This story highlights the number 19 and the letter S. Thanks for listening and being part of the Kitty Wink crew with us and our octopus pal, Ozzy. Woo woo. Are you looking for ways to support your favorite podcast? Always. Check out our Shopify store. The link is in the show notes, or you can find it at kittywinkcrew.myshopify.com. Are we ready to guess the animal in this story? <laughs> Let's go. Okay. Clue number one. I think this is maybe the best clue. <laughs> they, they are sluggish and slow moving. Oh, okay. Also two S words. And then I like that. clue two, they spend most of their lives hanging in trees. Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Number three, many people think they're related to monkeys, but they're actually related to armadillos and anteaters. Oh. That was surprising to me. That's interesting. I was thinking monkeys when I thought of hanging in trees. Okay. Great clue, Lindsay. Hmm. I do think I know this one because it does start with S. Listeners, what do you think? Is it a sloth? Yes, sloth. Woohoo! I bet our Kitty Wing guest knows a little bit about them. And we're excited to talk to our guest at the end about sloths, the letter S, and the number 19. Yes. Keep your ears open, listeners, and stick around until the end. Enjoy a Kitty Wing story from us. It's time to listen, and then we'll discuss. Yahoo! Let's go! Sandy the sloth and Steve the songbird were best friends. Despite many differences, especially in size, they loved to play with one another and shared all their secrets. Sometimes Steve would hang on to Sandy as she hung from trees. He would sing songs, and she would tell stories slow <laughs> stories, but they were really good stories. So Steve was willing to listen for as long as it took. Aww. As close as they were, they still got into arguments. Almost every argument happened in the morning. Steve would get up early and sing a beautiful morning song. It's a beautiful day. The sun will rise. Stretch your arms and open your eyes. He was awake and happy from the <laughs> moment his eyes opened. Uh, I'm usually pretty happy the moment I wake up, too. But I also have mornings when I want to shut my eyes and go back to sleep. Yeah, I relate a little more to that second one. <laughs> and Sandy always wanted to shut her eyes and go back to sleep. Oh, so she's like you. Yeah. So she woke up to Steve singing and went straight to yelling at him. Steve, stop it. I don't want to wake up yet. Sloths sleep 15 to 18 hours a day. And birds sleep only about 10 to 12 hours a day. So Sandy definitely needed more sleep than Steve. Well, yeah, 15 to 18 hours a day. Yeah, it's a lot. And honestly, Sandy almost always needed 19 <laughs> hours of sleep. She was an especially sleepy sloth. Aww. So what did Steve do when Sandy yelled at her? Steve would fly away sadly to a different branch to sing his songs. He really wished Sandy appreciated his singing, and it wasn't as fun to sing to nobody. No. But Sandy made it clear he shouldn't sing to her early in the morning. Yeah, she was pretty clear. Yeah. Finally, once Sandy was awake and ready to play, she would apologize for yelling. Steve's feelings were still a little hurt, but they would go back to being best friends before too long. Oh, good. After this happened for a few weeks straight, Steve started to go to sleep farther from Sandy so she wouldn't hear him at all in the morning. Steve wished he didn't have to go far away, but he also wanted to make Sandy happy. It was too bad she didn't appreciate his beautiful singing. Sandy was loving the new sleeping situation and was getting in 19 full hours of sleep a day. But one day, her parents announced that she would start kindergarten the next day. Oh, awesome. Mm -hmm. Super exciting. But she would have to wake up at 619 a.m. in order to get to school on time. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. 6.19 a.m. rolled around the next morning, and her parents couldn't get her to wake up. Oh, boy. Nothing they tried worked. 
Sandy was so late to school on her very first day of kin- kindergarten, which was far from ideal. No, and it never feels good to be late. No. School was really fun. They got to color, read books, and of course, they had nap time many times. <laughs> they had 19 minutes of nap time in the morning, 19 minutes around lunchtime, and 19 more minutes right before school got I out. I mean, what a kindergarten right? schedule. Of course, school for sloths would have lots of naps. Yep, they need their rest. <laughs> When Sandy got home, she told her parents all about the awesomeness of school. It was so, so awesome, Mom and Dad. But I don't want to be late again. I missed storytelling time, and I never want to miss that again. Everyone said the teacher told the coolest story about a sloth with magic powers I'm so sad I missed it. I bet you don't want to be late again. Let's try something new tomorrow to get you to wake up in time, said Sandy's mom. Oh, they talk slow. They do. (laughs) So the next morning, Sandy's parents tried something new. They spent all night trying to think of something creative to wake her up. They had some crazy ideas and decided to go with one of their silliest ideas. At 6.19 a.m., they threw marshmallows at her in, ho- in hopes of her waking up. Did you say marshmallows? Sure did. <laughs> How ridiculous. So ridiculous. And do you think it worked? Um, yes. I think I would wake up if someone was doing that to me. Well, it did not work oh. for Sandy. She slept away as marshmallows bonked her. <laughs> Bonk, boom, bink. Oh, man. Did they try something different the next day? They sure did. Oh, good. The next morning, they tried a silly and maybe even slightly painful idea. They sent a swarm of bees to wake her. Oh, ouch. Yeah, ouch is right. And you know what? Even that didn't wake her. Wow. She was so bummed to be late for school yet again. I hope their next plan wasn't so painful. It wasn't. Well, it wasn't painful to Sandy's body, but it was kind of painful to her ears. Uh, because the next plan was tap dancing. <laughs> what? Yeah. Her parents bought tap shoes and danced around her until she woke up. Oh, my gosh. I love her parents. She woke up pretty quickly, but she was so upset when she got up because the noise and shaking was almost too much to bear. So then she had to get out of a bad mood before she could head to school. So she was in tears when Steve stopped by. Oh, no. What's wrong, Sandy? Steve asked. Sandy shared her dilemma, and Steve said, Don't you worry one little bit, Sandy. I have the answer. I promise you will wake up at 6.19 a.m. tomorrow. Have fun at school. Wow, Sandy was relieved and intrigued. She was too late for storytelling time again and was so disappointed, but she felt strongly that Steve had a plan that would help the next day. 6.19 a.m. rolled around the next morning, and Steve was right there on a branch next to her. He cleared his throat and sang, Sandy is so sleepy and waking up is hard, but it's okay. Sandy is a kindergartner who is going to have a great day. And for the first time, Sandy was not annoyed at Steve's singing. She was actually incredibly grateful for it. And that's the end. Let's call a kitty wink. Hi, kitty wink. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Oliver, and I live in Summit, Wisconsin. Thank you, Oliver. How close is that to Madison, Wisconsin? Do you know? Are you close to there? An hour away. Nice. That's where I went to college. I love Wisconsin. I love Wisconsin, too. It's not so far from us. We're in Chicago, so you're not that far from us. And I'm six years old. What's the best part of being six years old? What do you think? Um... Being in first grade. Being in first grade. That's so cool. What were you in last year? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. And kindergarten comes up in our story. So thanks so much for coming on this week's journey with us. And Oliver, we would love for you to tell us what your favorite part of the story was. When um, the sloth 
got to get to school in, in time. Yeah, I was a little worried that Sandy was not going to make it on time. She couldn't wake up, could she? Yeah. Yeah. And what did her parents do to try to wake her up? Do you remember? Um, so emotional that her um get bees and um get tap shoes. <laughs> do your parents wake you up that way by using tap shoes and marshmallows and bees? No, he's shaking his head. No. Um, Oliver, would you like marshmallows being thrown at your face in the morning? No. no, I don't think I would either. Sometimes I would like to eat marshmallows in the morning, but I don't think I'd like them thrown at me. Yeah, I like s'mores, but maybe not, you know, first thing in the morning. Yeah, um, actually. And speaking of s'mores, which weren't in the story, but they start with the letter S. Oliver, did you notice the letter S at all in the story? Yeah. Sandy and 16 and songbird wow. and what was the last one? oh songbird yes songbird dad that, that was a good one i didn't even think of that oliver those are such great s words yeah and steve the songbird that's a good one where it has two s's right true yeah, yeah. and what about the number 19 i know you said 16 which starts with s which is a very smart observation um, did you notice the number 19 anywhere? Um, 19, like a.m. in the morning. You're mm -hmm. right. Not 6, 19 in the morning. Is that early? Do you wake up that early, Oliver? Yeah. No. Do you like to sleep in or do you like to wake up early? Wake up early. Oh, so you're more like Steve the Songbird. Yeah, so I'm guessing you don't, you probably don't need 19 hours of sleep, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> Did Sandy yeah. like to get 19 hours of sleep? Yeah. Yes. And That's sleep a, is so important, but yeah. 19 hours would be way too much for humans. Yeah, that's a lot of sleep, but it's really good that Sandy's listening to her body. Do you, do you go to bed? Do you listen to your body when you're tired? And go straight to sleep? Sometimes no, sometimes yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair answer. I would say the same for myself. <laughs> sometimes it's hard to wind down, right? And go to sleep? Yeah. Yeah. And I I also noticed, did you notice, Oliver, um, that they had nap time at school? Do you remember how long nap time was at school? Nineteen minutes. You got it. 19 minutes. I think they had it a few different times, but yeah, 19 minutes each time. Oliver, what do you think Sandy the Sloth learned in this story? Um, to get up in the morning at the right time so she wouldn't um, get light for school. Yeah, I would agree with that. She had to figure out how to get to kindergarten on time. And was she sort of bothered by Steve's singing in the beginning of the story? Yeah. Yeah. And then well, he had such a beautiful voice. I don't know why she would be so bothered. <laughs> well, I think she, it seems like she sort of figured out eventually that it was helpful to her, right? So sometimes things that might be hard or bothersome end up being helpful. Yeah, it's like she had two, she had mixed emotions. It was so hard the first time he would sing and wake her up because she loved her sleep. But then she also loved going to kindergarten. She was so excited about going to kindergarten, right? Yeah. So that's but she needed to be woken up. So did Steve help her in the end by waking her up? Yes. Do you help your friends like that if they need help? Yeah. I bet you're a great friend. I bet you are too. And how do you feel about going to school in the morning? Are you excited about it? Are you tired? What are your feelings when you wake up? Happy. 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 That's I'm a good happy too in the morning. Yeah, I'm tired in the morning. <laughs> hey, that's fair. I'm so happy after I have my coffee, then I am so happy. <laughs> well, before wrapping up, Oliver, we want to play with you a would you rather. All right. 
Would you rather, oh, we talked about this, but I think it's still a good one. Would you rather be woken up by marshmallows thrown at you or woken up by Steve the Songbird's beautiful voice? Steve the Songbird's beautiful voice. Uh, tell us why. Because I don't I don't want to like, like get up and someone's just throwing marshmallows at me. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. I, I, I think I might want the marshmallows just because it's silly, but I think your answer is a good answer. Yeah. Getting something thrown at you in the morning is a little rough. So I choose Steve, the songbird singing too. Yeah. Okay. Those are great answers. And Kitty Wink listeners, I bet you had a great answer to that too. Oliver, do you have a, would you rather for us and our listeners? Yes. Let's hear it. Would you rather be a sloth? Or a superhero. Ooh. Wow. That's, That's a good one. one. Really hard to choose. I think I would like to be a sloth because oh, sloth. I really like sleeping. <laughs> and I that? That would be so great. What about you, Jules? Well, I would pick superhero because I would love to be able to have superpowers. And I mentioned before, I would like to be frozen with ice coming out of my hands, but I think it would be so cool to fly and just to have something extra special and super like that. What about you, Oliver? Um, a superhero. Oh, tell us why. And what would your power be? Um, flying up to the moon. Oh, cool. that would be really cool. So would you choose superhero because you want to fly up to the moon or just because you want powers or why would you want to? Powers. Yeah. Who's your favorite superhero? Superman. That's a really good one. My son is going to be Superman for Halloween. That's a great costume. But he has a great cape, right? He sure does. And, we and can... he has a big S on his chest. Oh my gosh, how about that? That's perfect. Oh. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much, Oliver and listeners, for tuning in to episode 19. And we can't wait to be with you again on another episode. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oliver. That was so fun to be with all of you and have a conversation with our Kitty Wing guest, Oliver. If you would like to be a Kitty Wing guest, please reach out. We would love to have you. Email us at contactkittywink at gmail.com. And check out our Instagram page at Kitty Wing Crew. We would love to have artwork from our Kitty Wings to share. Can you draw Steve the Songbird serenading or singing to Sandy? If you can, please send it our way and we might just feature your artwork on our page. Thanks for letting us share what we love, stories. Please come back next week for a new podcast story adventure. We want to grow our community, so please show us some love by liking, subscribing, reviewing, and checking out our Shopify store. Yes, thank you. And remember to love yourself, others, and spread that love everywhere. Or as Ozzy would say, lead with your three hearts. Bye. Bye. Go, K-Wake. Yay. Stories written and read by Juliana Bria and Lindsay Farley. Original theme by Miriam Mayer. Artwork by Amy Nicholson and Maggie Porter. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a Kitty Wing Crew production.